plan, control, and dominate. PC gaming wouldn't be PC gaming without strategy games, and there's a packed lineup to explore. Hello, my name is GameZack, and welcome to my 25 upcoming PC strategy games in 2019 and 2020 list. Now, this video mentions over 50 games, so it's likely there's something for you, but the main list I talk about focuses on real-time strategies and 4Xs. Then we have 15 tactics games alongside remasters, expansions, plus a few bonuses at the end, so be sure to watch all the way through so you don't miss what might be your favorite new strategy game. Alright, let's get started. First out of the gate is The First Men by Para Games, a real-time single-player or multiplayer 4X set in a fantasy world. Customize your first people and face off against other races with diplomacy, war, and advancement of your civilization. Individual characters have traits and can progress, management of settlements and bases, exploration and expeditions, a real-time combat system that involves cards, and Steam Workshop support. The game has a distinct look to it too, which is not at all unpleasant. Now I know when it comes to card systems, it's either a love or hate situation, but the important thing to keep in mind is that not too much gameplay has been revealed yet, so it's hard to judge. Might be worth keeping an eye on the first men, though as not much else looks similar to this. Going just a little bit back in time, we have War Party by War Cave and Crazy Monkey Studios. An old-school inspired RTS, here we have a Stone Age setting, dinosaurs, and what I think many strategy enthusiasts are looking for, classic gameplay. Base building, resource management, army micro, and map awareness. All the building blocks of a traditional RTS, and so far the game being in early access on Steam has garnered very positive reviews. The theme of War Party might not be to everyone's taste, but it does have character, an important element that many newer RTS games often forget. Next we have Bannerman by Pathos Interactive. A game that's kind of like a mix between StarCraft, WarCraft 3, and Age of Empires, this is a blend of old RTSs that could turn out great but has some snags. Environmental interaction is a big thing, like causing landslides with catapults or freezing over lakes. And there are magical elements too with god powers. Having played some of the multiplayer beta, gameplay is solid with the usual resource collection, training of armies, and hero units, but a big critique is that it can still feel rather bland. There isn't as much identity to the game as it needs, but maybe that will be improved as the campaign for Bannerman gets developed. Floating into the sky, we have Driftland, the magic revival by Star Drifters. What might initially look like Netstorm, but plays more like Majesty, this is a blend of old games turned into a competitive RTS. Use magical powers, connect and conquer floating islands, and build an army that you don't directly control, but give orders for units to figure out on their own, like in Majesty. It's been in early access and was rather rough at the start, but quickly got updates and patches that continued consistently over its first year. It can be difficult for players unfamiliar with this style of game to get used to it, and the number of resources can feel complicated to keep track of when it comes to where to get them and what they're used for. But if it's your kind of game, you'll be able to stick with it until you get it. Driftland was meant to release out of early access in 2018, but it seems like development is taking a little bit longer, so keep an eye on it if you're liking the look, but waiting for release. Digging underground, we have Empires of the Undergrowth by Slug Disco Studios. Ant games have come a long way over the decades, from Sim Ant to Empire of the Ants, and now Empires of the Undergrowth. An ant colony management and RTS game, you excavate your nest, collect food, and raise a brood to dominate the surface against competitors and rival colonies. Combat is meant to be fast-paced, and you can play as different ant species. Empires of the Undergrowth is looking to complete in 2019, and there is a free old demo you can try, or check out its early access state on Steam, which people seem to be liking so far. In a post-apocalyptic world, we have They Are Billions by Numansion Games. A game that's easy to forget is actually still in development. They Are Billions was a huge hit in its first year of early access and has only been adding more content over time. The world has fallen to zombies and you need to build one of the last surviving human colonies. Harvest resources, train an army, and last against waves of the undead as you try to dominate the map. 
A criticism often leveled against the game is that it doesn't really do anything new, but what it does do is very well executed with a strong sense of character and identity. It can also be extremely easy to lose the game in the matter of seconds, which is a kind of stress that some love and others hate. On the way is a proper single player story mode campaign and even more content is planned, so They Are Billion should be getting even more fleshed out over time. For something a little bit different, we have Modu War by Biohex Games. Here's one that's just a little strange, an RTS where you grow a large organism and your units are modular creatures that you can combine and evolve as you please. Not too much has been seen so far, but it's an interesting concept with story and basic gameplay in place. As with anything different, it could become a niche favorite, though it's hard to judge before it's playable. Heading towards an early access release in 2019, we'll see more then if Modu War can grow into something impressive or whether it will struggle to survive. Next up, we've got Thea 2 The Shattering by Muha Games. In a dark land based on Slavic myth, this is a mix of a strategic 4X with card-based tactical combat in a fantasy world of survival. You play a deity as you guide a small flock of believers trying to survive as you engage in exploration, diplomacy, crafting, and town building in single player or co-op multiplayer with up to three players. It's looking good so far and fans of the first game should enjoy this one too and it's the kind of game that will have a strong niche audience. Going into early access at the end of 2018, you'll be able to have a good look at Thea 2 The Shattering before jumping in. Going from fantasy to sci-fi, we now have Age of Wonders Planetfall by Triumph Studios. A game series with a long history, Age of Wonders is a bit of a classic and its jump into modern gaming with Age of Wonders 3 was well received. This time though, fans of the series might be a little thrown off as the game goes sci-fi. It's still going to be a 4x turn-based tactical strategy game with empire building like we know and love, but with a completely different story and setting. The gameplay that's been shown off looks good and it's still made by Triumph Studios, so we can expect Age of Wonders Planetfall to live up to the standard of its predecessors. Next is Pax Nova by Grey Wolf Entertainment. Another sci-fi turn-based 4X lead one of several factions split by three races as you explore new worlds across star systems, build cities, expand your influence and battle on the surface of planets and in space. Not many 4X games actually deal with both space and planet side gameplay, which might be enough to make the game unique enough. Though the developers Grey Wolf don't have too many games under their belt, so we'll have to wait and see if gameplay is as deep and complex as it needs to be. The development goal is to enter Steam Early Access by the end of 2018 and to release shortly after in 2019, so hopefully Pax Nova will be able to stick to its schedule. Sticking to space, we've got Starborn Sovereign Space by Solid Clouds. Many were skeptical when Starborn started to get attention as it looked a little rough and there seemed to be a kind of loot box and card system. After the game became playable in alpha, it's been getting a lot of positive attention though, as the focus really is on the actual gameplay and it's been demonstrated to not be pay to win. Not to mention that this is a free to play game in the first place. Starborn is an MMO RTS 4X game where a single match can take months to complete, so if you're into this you can be really into it. Build a fleet, sabotage your enemies, ally with rivals and conquer the galaxy. Being free and in open alpha right now, it's easy enough to jump in and have a look yourself. So if you're really curious, you can check out Starborn Sovereign Space right now as it continues development. Next up is AI War 2 by Arkan Games. Here's a game that we've been watching for a few years now. This is a grand strategy RTS where you face an overwhelming, inhuman enemy who has conquered the galaxy. Steal technology, control territory, and fortify your bases as you launch attacks on the enemy. The more you fight, the more attention you draw though, making the enemy more aggressive. Multiple factions, lots of dialogue, solo and co-op multiplayer, and modability are promised. Recently released into early access on Steam, with few but very positive reviews, the plan is to release fully around mid-2019, so if you're holding off until AI War 2 is done, then you can check it out again then. 
back onto the ground, but staying with sci-fi, we've got Re-Legion by Ice Code Games. A sci-fi RTS centered around a futuristic, technocratic society and converting people to your belief system. It reminds me of Dark Rain 2 in many ways, from the music to how battles look, just with a more cyberpunk approach. The conversion mechanic could be cool enough to set it apart, however, to really pull off cyberpunk, you need a lot of character to the world and a good story doesn't hurt either, otherwise the game could end up too generic. It is promising a mature story with moral choices though. Aiming for a quarter one 2019 release, hopefully Re-Legion will be a solid RTS and not end up feeling too bland. And now to go into a historical setting with Lords and Peasants by Inverted Cat Games. This is a medieval real-time strategy with city-building elements where you build a town and defend it while also going out to explore the map to compete with others. Starting as a small village, you can grow into a prospering city where every peasant is individually simulated. Also, diplomacy and conquest is a thing in up to 16-player multiplayer. Development has been progressing and improvements are notable, though it seems to be moving along a little slowly. So the release window is unclear. From what is visible now, the game has promise, but Lords and Peasants will only live up to it if development is progressing faster than the dev updates are going out. Now for some castle building with Stronghold Next by Firefly Studios. The next Stronghold game has a lot of info out there thanks to Firefly answering all those questions about it on their YouTube channel, but no gameplay has been revealed yet, so we can't say much. What we do know is that it'll be in a never-done-before setting for the Stronghold series. There will be new core mechanics that change Siege gameplay, and it's a full PC title. The focus of the game is also meant to be more like Stronghold 2, centered around castle economics rather than fast-paced action. The newest Stronghold games haven't gone down as well with a lot of the fans, so hopefully looking back to the older ones will be what we're all hoping for. Gameplay was meant to be shown off by the end of 2018, but it's been a bit delayed. Not even a screenshot, come on Firefly Studios. Well, we'll have to just wait until the full reveal of the new Stronghold in 2019. Speaking of new versions of classic games, we have The Settlers by Blue Byte. After the release of The Settlers History Collection, allowing us to play all the old Settlers games again with ease, a new one is on the way. The first main game in the series in almost a decade. Now everyone has a favorite Settlers game and the community is split on what they want from a new one. Some want the series to return to its roots like the first few games, while others like the new format from 5 onwards. Either way, we should see the release of The Settlers in Fall 2019, and we can hope that it'll live up to the hype and expectations of everyone. Then we have Total War Three Kingdoms by Creative Assembly. Total War Arena is shutting down, which is a bit of a shame as many people seem to like it. There's no shortage of new Total War games though, as the next one is Three Kingdoms, the first in the series to be set in ancient China. Choose from 11 warlords and fight on the military, technological, political, and economic fronts. The new setting can be refreshing, and a fractured China is a nice stage for a Total War game, though the series isn't always a hit with each release. Most recently, Thrones of Britannia has been met with mixed reviews, and Arena being shut down isn't a good sign either. Set for release on the 7th of March 2019, if you're looking for a Total War game with a bit of a twist, Total War 3 Kingdoms might be what you're looking for, though it might be wise to wait for release before marching into this one. Heading over to the Mediterranean, we've got Imperator Rome by Paradox Development Studio. Alexander, Hannibal, and Caesar. A new grand strategy game from Paradox, it's set in the tumultuous centuries of Alexander's successor empires to the foundation of the Roman Empire. Populations will be diverse in terms of culture and religion, you can manage your empire using various government types, deal with barbarians, develop your provinces, and profit from trade. Characters that have varying traits and skills are a thing too. The gameplay we have seen looks to be complex, with a lot of room for depth, but it's hard to know for sure right now. Once the game releases, we'll know if Imperator Rome will be able to hold its own against the competition on release, or whether it will need a few DLC to fulfill its potential. 
Speaking of the competition, we have Field of Glory Empires by Hagiod. Another grand strategy game set in the classical era, you'll manage your empire, construct buildings, and use your battle knowledge to dominate the battlefield. One interesting feature is that you'll be able to export your battles into Field of Glory 2 for even more control, then import the results back into this game. Sounds a bit clunky, but nice for those who want it. It's also boasting that it has one of the largest asynchronous multiplayer systems ever created, which would either excite you or sound incredibly daunting. Games from this developer often have a more niche but strong followings, as they tend to be very deep, complex, and historical. And if you didn't know, the founder of Agiod created the original board game for Europa Universalis. If all that sounds like your thing, Field of Glory Empires is probably going to be a game that you can spend countless hours on. Next we have Taste of Power by One Ocean LLC. Set in an alternative medieval world, this RTS isn't the most pretty game to look at going off what we've seen, but it's trying to be a mix of Starcraft and Total War. Gather resources, build cities, and establish new settlements as you discover new technologies and battle in real time. There is a free demo on the Steam page, so you can get a taste of it. Haha, <laughs> get it. But it's often hard to judge the finished product from an early sample. Though it does look a little rough and unpolished right now, it's aiming to go into early access on Steam by February 2019. And we'll soon find out if Taste of Power will have something special about it, or it's just a little too generic. What many consider an important item in this list, Zero AD by Wildfire Games. A free and open source historical RTS, this is one that's come a long way and many Age of Empires fans would recommend giving this a shot. You can expect the usual RTS elements like choosing a civilization, gathering resources, building a base, training an army, and defeating your opponents. Technically started in 2009, this isn't something that's going to have a traditional release. But with the current state of the Age of Empires revival and the messy definitive edition, Zero AD is something you might want to check out if you haven't already. Speaking of AOE, we have Age of Empires 4 by Relic Entertainment. A new Age of Empires is on the way and nothing really has been confirmed. Some guesses can be made based on the trailer, it's probably either going to be a multi-age game like Empire Earth, or the latest age that hasn't been tackled by the series so far, the late 19th century and the world wars. The game is also being developed by Company of Heroes developers Relic Entertainment, further pointing towards a likely World Wars setting. That's all guesswork though, but building up to its release are the definitive editions of older age games. And if you're a viewer of this channel, you'll know I wasn't too pleased with the first one. We can expect more news about Age 4 in 2019, and I'd expect a possible release in 2020 once the next two definitive editions have released. Now a game confirmed in World War II is Panzer Corps 2 by Flashback Games. Not too much gameplay has been shown off for this one, but if the first game is any indication, it'll be tactical, historical, and deep. Though without any proper gameplay to look at, or even an in-engine trailer, we can only say so much from the bits shown off in the dev diaries, and not a lot of info is shown off on the official page. You can check out the first game on Steam, and we can expect this one to be a step up from that, but I'd wait until we get a proper look at Panzer Corps 2 before deciding anything. Continuing the World War II setting, we've got Steel Division 2 by Eugen Systems. This one has realistic real-time tactics battles set on the Eastern Front with one-to-one -one scale turn-based army management. Dynamic campaigns and substantial changes to the deck building mechanic have been stated along with offline, co-op and 10v10 multiplayer game modes. The previous Steel Division game got very positive reviews on Steam, and this one is planning a 2019 release. So we'll see if Eugen Systems can make Steel Division 2 live up to its predecessor. And for the final main game in this list, it's Iron Harvest by King Art Games. Claiming to be the RTS that fans actually want, this one is set in an alternate reality 1920s in a kind of world war but with steampunk mechs. Well, they ran a Kickstarter in 2018 and raised over one and a half million US dollars, so a lot of people are waiting for this one. 
prioritizing strategy and tactics over APM and micro, gameplay looks very good so far. You can also expect base building, single player campaigns, destructible environments, and a cover system for units. If you recall earlier in the list, I mentioned many games needing or lacking character, and Iron Harvest is addressing this by attempting to write epic and engaging stories over the course of three major faction campaigns, developing heroes and characters while also building on the world of 1920+. Co-op, skirmish, and probably most importantly, a competitive multiplayer mode are also planned. Overall, it's looking the best it could be at this point with everything going for it and it would hurt deeply if Iron Harvest doesn't pan out, which I do have to remind myself is always a possibility. And now that we've gone through the main 25 games, let me quickly let you know about 15 tactics games on the way. Gears Tactics, it's aiming to bring the feeling of Gears of War fast-paced action to turn-based tactics. Necromunda Underhive Wars, set in the 40k universe where you fight rival gangs in brutal gunfights. Adeptus Titanicus Dominus, more 40k but Titan legions, you control mechs and weapons. Other Side, a horror-themed tactical turn-based game about the sacrifices you make to prevent reality from shattering. Element Space, a turn-based squad-based game where you're a rogue captain leading your crew in a sci-fi universe. Ram Pressure, a story-driven single-player or online multiplayer sci-fi game with turn-based combat like XCOM. Grand Tactician, The Civil War, 1861 to 1865. It's set in the American Civil War where you command the battlefield. Phantom Brigade, lots of giant robots in turn-based tactics, deep customization, and destructible environments. War Groove, a turn-based strategy game for up to four players where you control an army in a colorful pixel art world. Fell Seal, Arbiter's Mark. This is a turn-based tactical RPG in a fantasy world, customizable characters, and has a charming art style. Overland. This squad-based survival game is set in a procedural post-apocalyptic North America in a kind of Oregon Trail journey. End State, a classic turn-based tactics game where you manage and control your squad in various combat and intelligence operations. Phoenix Point, this is a turn-based tactics and open-world strategy from the creators of the original XCOM with an alien threat and huge boss monsters. Xenonauts 2. It had a Kickstarter in 2018, raising almost £200,000, and we might finally see it in action in 2019. And Desperados 3, a modern real-time tactics game set in the Wild West, controlling a ragtag band of unlikely heroes. So there are 15 tactics games for you, and now let's go over a few bonus games, starting with Remasters. Warcraft 3 Reforged is on the way. Command and Conquer Remasters are also planned, developed with the original developers who are now at Petroglyph. Skylords Reborn, which is basically Battleforge brought back to life. If you didn't know, Age of Empires Online is actually revived under the name Project Celeste, and that's going through ongoing developments and improvements by fans. And of course, we have Age of Empires 2 II and 3 Definitive Edition on the way as their own remasters, which may or may not be good. A couple expansions to mention. Civilization VI is getting Gathering Storm, where it brings disasters, and a lot of much-needed features that probably should have been in the game sooner. Hearts of Iron IV is getting Man the Guns expansion, and we could probably expect a new Stellaris expansion after Megacore, but nothing is confirmed there. I'm just mentioning because I know many of you love Stellaris. And finally, for five bonus games that are on the horizon, but not much really has been shown or developed and probably won't really even be playable by 2020, I just want to mention Birth of Civilization, which is in very early development, Edge of Chaos, which has a Kickstarter starting in 2019, Gates of a Ruined Empire, which is developed by one person and it's funded by Patreon, Knight's Province, which has been in development since 2013, so it's probably going to take a while longer. And there's a big chance of Knights of Honor 2. There is a screenshot, but nothing else on Twitter over at Black Sea Games. And that's it. 25 plus upcoming strategy games that should be releasing through 2019 and some into 2020, depending on their developments. 
Which ones are you most interested in? Also, here's something I'd like to know from you. In a time of new strategy games that are either trying to recapture the classics or innovate for the future, what do you think makes the perfect strategy game? Is it something about the gameplay or is it the story, setting and campaigns that matter? Or are you all about the competitive esports? Now, if you'd like to see more strategy content, you can check out my Age of Empires videos where I have a lot of opinions about the Definitive Edition or all the other new games I cover in the Gamer Encounters series. Also, remember, this is only one of six lists I make every year, so there are plenty more upcoming games I can show you. All right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I will see you in the next video.